Hey YouTube, in this video we'll discuss yeast one hybrid. It is a technique used to detect binding between a protein of interest and a DNA sample of interest. I'll leave a link in the description to my video on yeast three hybrid, and I'll leave timestamps so you can jump around to the part of the video you want to see. But first let's talk about the central dogma of biology, or how DNA becomes protein. You start off with double-stranded DNA, and then through a process called transcription, you take the coding regions or the genes of that DNA and convert it into RNA, which is the single-stranded intermediate between DNA and protein. And then through a process called translation, you take that RNA and convert it into protein. Proteins can do a lot of things, including actually be involved in transcription and translation themselves. So once a protein is made, it can one, go back and bind to DNA and help with the process of transcription, or two, go back and bind to RNA and help with the process of translation. Now let's talk about the three kinds of yeast hybrids. They're a technique used to detect protein binding. You can detect the binding of a protein to other proteins, that's called a yeast two hybrid, to DNA, that's called a yeast one hybrid, or to RNA, that's called a yeast three hybrid. They are used in vivo, which means in living. They're gonna be done in an actual organism instead of a test tube or something like that. And the organism being used is yeast. They all utilize what's known as bait and prey, which are just scientific nicknames for the two components that are going to bind to each other. And they utilize what's known as reporters. Reporters are used in order to tell whether or not your two components actually were binding to each other. There are two types of reporters. The first reporter used is called an oxytrophic marker. If the yeast is able to grow and media deficient in certain amino acids that it needs, then you'll know that your two components actually bound to each other. The second type used is called a color metric marker, which turns the colonies a different color if the two components bound to each other. So here's an example of a color metric marker. This probably isn't a yeast hybrid, but it gets the point across. You can tell the difference between the two types of colonies by whether or not the colonies are blue or peach. So if this was a yeast hybrid and your two components bound to each other, then your colonies would be blue. So in this video, we're only gonna be talking about yeast one hybrids. If you need help with yeast two hybrids, there are literally thousands of videos already on YouTube on those. So go ahead and watch one of those videos. And I'll leave a link in the description of this video to my video on yeast three hybrid. All right, let's go ahead and talk about yeast one hybrids now. Just remember that this is testing your protein of interest for its ability to bind to a specific DNA of interest. All right, here's a good picture describing how yeast one hybrids work. This picture probably doesn't make much sense right now and I don't expect it to. So we're gonna walk through the steps of a yeast one hybrid together and hopefully by the end of it, this picture will make sense. I'll go ahead and keep referring to the picture every time we discuss a new point about yeast one hybrids. Okay, there are a total of three points I want you to remember about yeast one hybrids. The first one, your DNA sample of interest or your bait is inserted upstream or before a reporter gene and its promoter. And for the sake of this video, you can consider the promoter just another part of the reporter. So now let's refer back to the picture. So the three rectangles circled are on a DNA sequence, red from left to right. So you'll see the bait sequence in gray first, and then the promoter and the reporter next. Now the promoter is just another section of the reporter. So you can think of those as the same thing. So the bait sequence is inserted upstream or before the promoter and the reporter. So the next point I want you to remember is two. The protein of interest, also known as prey, is fused to an activating domain for the reporter gene. So let's take a look at the picture and see if we can decipher that. So the prey protein, which we're testing for binding to the bait sequence of DNA, is fused to the orange part known as the activation domain. Now what that orange part is gonna do, the activation domain is gonna actually activate the reporter if it gets close enough. So just keep that in mind. So the third point I want you to remember is if the protein of interest that you're looking at binds to the DNA of interest, then the activating domain will stimulate the reporter gene. 
Okay, let's see if we can decipher that. If your red prey protein binds to your bait sequence of DNA, then the activation domain will be close enough to your reporter to turn it on, thus telling you that your two components bound to each other. If this was a color metric marker, then these colonies would be blue. At the bottom, you can see what happens if the two components don't bind to each other. If the red prey protein cannot bind to the bait sequence of DNA, then the activation domain will not be close enough to the reporter to activate it. So in a color metric marker, these colonies would be peach. So here are the three points again, except by color coordinated them. So now you can flip back between the picture and this in order to help you get a better understanding of what's going on. All right, well, I hope that helped you understand yeast one hybrid. Thank you so much for watching. I wanna go ahead and say that the picture was from bitesizebio.com. And if you wanna go ahead and check that out, they have a good description of yeast one hybrid as well. And again, I'll leave my link to my video on yeast three hybrid in the description of this video. Thank you so much.